Hello and welcome to our video devotional for today here at Covenant Keepers Ministries. It is Thursday, April the 4th, 2019. And we've been looking at the parable of the wicked uh, vine dressers in Matthew 21. And I want to read today verses 34 through 39. And, and here's what they state. It says, Now when the, the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that he might receive its fruit. And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. And last of all, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. So here is the owner of the vineyard who had gone to a far country, leased out the vineyard to vine dressers. Now he came to receive the, the payment on the lease to receive the fruit of the vineyard. And they, they stone one, beat another, and kill another. Did likewise to the second group of servants that he sends. And lastly, he sends his son. And they said, wow, here's the heir. We're going to get the inheritance. Let's kill him. And they did. Most commentators agree that the reference to the sending of the first two sets of servants are references to the prophets who were sent to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament. Again and again, God sent his prophets to Israel, warning them, you're sowing wild grapes. I'm going to have to judge you. And judge them he did. He chastened them through heathen nations. Even John the Baptist was sent as a forerunner to the Messiah. He said, I, I didn't come for the kingdom. I came to baptize you doing of meat of fruits for repentance. And then last of all, this owner of the vineyard sends his son and they will reverence or respect my son. However, they killed him expecting to seize on the inheritance. This parable clearly, clearly represents the sending of Jesus Christ to the nation of Israel. He whom God calls the heir of all things, they will reverence. However, him they crucified. This parable is located in the same chapter as, as the record of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The, the depiction of the selfishness of religious leaders is so clear. The scribes, the chief priests, the Pharisees desired the praises of men. They wanted the inheritance. They demanded it for themselves and they got it for the most part. Have you ever noticed how clearly that seems to be true of, of the same spirit that's manifested among churches, denominations, and religious orders of today? Leaders often govern for their own advantage. Not entirely different from what Americans experience from politically elected officials in, in our nation today. How many church leaders do you know who serve others in a genuine way? Who take the towel and wash others' feet? When have you noticed the pastor of your church visiting prisoners, our widows, our orphans, are giving their own dollars to support the poor? Are, are pastors and evangelists and prophets just simply set to train others and not participate into the ministry of service? My observation has been that leaders often busy themselves with, quote, ministry work, not often associated with service to those of a, quote, lesser order, unquote, in the kingdom than themselves. And it was to these very people that Christ came to take the kingdom from their hands and put it into the hands of others. See, if we can't make application to the day, we're in trouble. And if there is an application for today and leaders are fitting into that category, they need to repent and turn from their sin. See, I, I've watched this about leaders. If one becomes bitter, defensive, indignant, or even fierce when contradicted, does it not reveal a zeal springing from desire to have our own influence acknowledged rather than a deep love of others, our regard for truth is truth? Quote from Mark, Marcus Dodd's commentary. I'll repeat that statement. It's pretty valuable. If one becomes bitter, defensive, indignant, or fierce when contradicted, does it not reveal a seal springing from the desire to have our own influence acknowledged 
rather than a deep love of others or regard for truth as truth. I have wondered in brokenness before God as to where and when my personal actions might have ever reflected that spirit. Jesus came as heir and rightful heir to the throne. Isaiah states it succinctly. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. The similarities between this parable and the actual story of Christ are not to be ignored. You see, he said that the Son of Man came to serve, not to be served. And so there's some there's two very important questions that beg to be answered by me and by all who watch this video, all who consider themselves followers or disciples of Christ. How are you treating, how are you treating the heir, Jesus Christ? How are you treating God's one and only son? How have you responded to him? And the second question is, how have you embraced the mantle of service? Father, The servant's not greater than his master. And our master, you, Jesus, said, this is how we are to be. Whether we're a denominational head, a pastor of a church, an evangelist, a prophet, whether we're a teacher, instructor in the word of God, whether we're a boss or an employer, whether we're an employee or whether we're a deacon or an elder, you told us, here's the call, calls to serve. And so, Lord, we're looking at your life and saying we're humbled. We're humbled because you, the king of glory, humbled yourself and took our place on that cross and suffered and died for us. And you were despised and rejected by men. And, and we want the honor of men before we want the honor of God. And we repent of it right now. We ask you to turn our hearts toward you. And we ask you to humble us in your sight and break us that we might be tools fit for the master's use. And I give you the glory that you're at work in me to do that. And you're at work of those who truly follow you to do that very same thing. You be praised. You be honored. You are God. And we are your servants. Amen. Grace and peace. Have a blessed day.